वेलकम यू ऑल टू पार्ट फाइव ऑफ द चैप्टर एटम्स बोर गेव एन आइडिया अबाउट वट इज द एनर्जी ऑफ द रेडिएशन एमिटेड वेन एन इलेक्ट्रॉन जम्स फ्रॉम हाई एनर्जी ऑर्बिट टू द लो एनर्जी ऑर्बिट इन हिस थर्ड पॉस्टिट लेट एस चेक इट आउट वेन एन इलेक्ट्रॉन जम्प फ्रॉम हाई एनर्जी ऑर्बिट टू द लो एनर्जी ऑर्बिट इट इमिट्स इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेट रेडिएशन हुज एनर्जी इज इक्वल टू एनर्जी डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू ऑर्बिट्स so let us check it out these are the two orbits and this is the orbit n1 whose energy is e1 this is the orbit n2 whose energy is e2 e2 is greater than e1 now let us check it out what happens when an electron jumps from the high energy orbit to the low energy orbit when an electron jumps from high energy orbit to the low energy orbit it emits a radiation electromagnetic radiation in the form of photon whose energy is h nu and that h nu is equal to energy difference between these two orbits so what is that now here e2 minus e1 we have already derived what is the energy of the nth orbit term that is e is equal to minus m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon not square n square h square energy of the orbit is negative because electrons are bound to the nucleus okay let me substitute that here so e2 let me write y minus m e raised to 4 8 epsilon not square n2 because we are we are considering for e2 now here n2 square h square minus energy is always negative that is minus m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon not square n n1 square since it is for e1 h square right so minus into minus we will be getting with the plus sign here right so if you consider these two terms m e raised to 4 8 epsilon not square h square is common let me take it outside now right so what is the remaining in the inside the bracket now right if you take what is the remaining here 1 by n1 square let me write 1 1 divided by n1 square minus What is remaining here? One divided by n two square, and this is the expression for h nu. We are deriving the expression for frequency. Let me take nu this side and send h to this side. Then, okay, what we will be getting? M e is to four divided by eight epsilon not square h square into h. We will be getting with h cube. So, what is remaining here? One divided by n one square minus one divided by n two square, and this is the expression for frequency of the emitted radiation. Now, let us find what is the expression for its wavelength as well as the wave number. Before that, let me introduce to you what is the meaning of wave number. As the name suggests, it is number of waves per unit length. It is denoted by nu bar. and it is also defined as reciprocal of its wavelength so nu bar is equal to 1 divided by lambda now let us find what is the expression for lambda as well as for nu bar okay now let us check it out that now we got with the frequency of the emitted radiation that is nu equal to m e is to 4 divided by 8 epsilon not square h cube 1 divided by n1 square minus 1 divided by n2 square now we need to find what is the expression for its wavelength and frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional to each other so it it is related by this expression that is nu equal to c by lambda c is speed of light in vacuum lambda is the wavelength and they are inversely proportional to each other if frequency is more wavelength is less if frequency is less wavelength is more and they are related by this equation so let me substitute nu in place of nu that is c divided by lambda that is m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon square h cube 1 divided by n square minus 1 divided by n square so let me uh, keep lambda this side this 1 divided by lambda let me take c to this side so we will be getting with the m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon square h cube c 1 divided by n square minus 1 divided by n square if you see this equation m that is mass of the electron is constant charge of the electron is constant permittivity of free space is constant planck's constant is constant and uh, speed of light in vacuum there is also constant so this is this is a term which has the constant values if i substitute all these values we will be getting with 1.097 into 10 to 7 per meter and this constant is called as rydberg's constant so let me substitute this by r so we will be getting with the expression for wavelength that is 1 by lambda is equal to r 1 divided by n1 square minus 1 divided by n2 square so this is the expression for wavelength of the radiation emitted and if you want to find for a uh, wave number it is the same because wave number is the reciprocal of the wavelength so it remains the same r 1 divided by n1 square minus 1 divided by n2 square so this is the expression for wave number
Now let us see the explanation for Bohr's second postulate given by De Broglie. According to Bohr's second postulate, electrons revolve around the nucleus only in those orbits in which angular momentum is integral multiple of h divided by 2 pi. And this explanation was given by De Broglie's hypothesis. According to De Broglie's hypothesis, if there is a particle of mass m and it is moving with the momentum t, then it is always associated with the wave and he called it as matter wave whose wavelength is given by lambda is equal to h divided by momentum that is mass into velocity so lambda is equal to h divided by mv so that is the wavelength of the matter wave form right he applied this hypothesis in this concept now here right when electrons are revolving around the nucleus right so these electrons exhibit wave nature and there is a formation of a stationary wave like this and what is the condition for stationary waves? The condition for stationary wave formation is that total distance traveled by the wave must be integral multiple of its wavelength. Then only stationary wave can be formed. For example, let me take this is the length of the rope. Right? If I make this rope up and down, there is a formation of stationary wave. If I want to make again the stationary wave, then we need to extend the length of the rod in a such a way that it should be integral multiple of the wavelength. If you take the length of the rope this much, okay, no, there is no formation of stationary waves. The length of the rope must be in a such a way that it should be integral multiple of the wavelength. It means that the distance traveled by the wave is such that it should be integral multiple of its wavelength. Then only the stationary waves are formed. Okay, now if the electron is revolving around the nucleus, then what is the distance uh, traced by this uh, electron? That is nothing but the circumference of the circle. So let me take that is 2 pi r that is equal to integral multiple of its wavelength. So what is the wavelength of the uh, wave, uh, electron here? Let me take n into lambda. So 2 pi r is equal to n and we know from the de Broglie's hypothesis lambda is equal to h divided by mv okay now let me take mv this side that is mv into r let me take 2 pi that side you know that is nh divided by 2 pi then what is this mv into r that is nothing but angular momentum that is l is equal to nh divided by 2 pi it is nothing but angular momentum is equal to integral multiple of h divided by 2 pi like this de Broglie explained Bohr's second postulate now let us check out what are the limitations of Bohr's model Bohr's model is applied to the atoms having a single electron like a hydrogen and hydrogen like atoms hydrogen there is only one electron if I take a helium there are two electrons if you remove one electron it will be helium plus lithium it has three electrons if you remove two it will become a lithium plus plus all these are atoms are having a single electron here the Bohr's model can be applied but it is not applied to the atoms having more than one electron so this is one of the drawback of a Bohr's model and a Bohr's model could not explain fine structure of spectral lines okay this is a spectral lines and some lines can be seen uh, beside this spectral line and it could not explain why we got that kind of lines beside the spectral lines so that those are those are called as uh, fine structure and it could not uh, give answer to the fine structure of the spectral lines and even it could not explain the relative intensities of the spectral line if you see the spectrum some spectral lines are brighter some are lighter now here, right some are having a high intensity some are having low intensity and uh, about these relative intensities we cannot find answer in this Bohr's model so these are some of the drawbacks of Bohr's model thank you